this. But let's go into number two because I just kind of jumped the gun there. But mortgage rates are historically low is number two. Yes. And it sounds like they're going to be and remain low for a long time. I know. And we're, we, we, we touched on the mortgage rate merry-go-round, you know, in so many of our SNL shows recently. But we've got to tell you, it is the driving factor. We know affordability of a home is a combination of what the price of the house is and what the, what the mortgage rate is. Money is almost free right now. It's just incredible. And what we're seeing in these multiple offer situations is you hear about the bidding wars and you think, well, why would people be jumping up in price so much and paying so much more? Well, we're hearing from the buyers again, that monthly nut, even if they overbid on a house by 25 or $50,000, they can do the math and their payment jumps up so incrementally, they're still in a better place than if they were renting. And so it's more about getting a home, getting that fixed year, uh, fixed for 30 year mortgage. They know what their expenses are going to be moving forward. And that's a comforting factor. Yeah. And Freddie Mac actually just recently forecasted that the uh, interest rates are going to stay low through 2021 and they're going to hover around that 3%. And again, is one of the main driving forces here uh, for this a strong housing recovery. So again, we have the millennials at number one being a driving force for at least the, the generational a uh, group that's going to be buying homes. And then we have low interest rates that are going to remain low and hover around 3% through 2021 per uh, Freddie Mac. And that's probably another reason why we're seeing uh, low inventory. And right now with low inventory, we just did this stat the other day, like we, we follow month supply of inventory, a month supply of inventory uh, in a, for a neutral market is between four and six months supply. Here in Southern California, we're in the twos. So even if we double inventory overnight, we're still going to be considered what's called a neutral market. We're not going to be in a buyer's market. We're not going to be in a seller's market. So we're so undersupplied. And the reason why is because a lot of people are taking advantage of those low interest rates and getting into a home with a low payment, payments maybe even below what they're renting for. I know I've mentioned this story before on a previous Previous video. So if you've seen it before, I apologize, but I'm going to mention it again because it's so great. And I love I love bringing up this example. But when I was talking to my dad, when I was refinancing my mortgage interest rate, which was about six hundred and seventy thousand dollars, we came to, to determine that my monthly payment at, for a six hundred and seventy thousand dollar mortgage was the exact same monthly payment that he was making when he bought his home for three hundred and ten thousand in nineteen eighty eight. And and that payment in nineteen eighty eight was a lot more probably back then what it is today. So a lot of folks, especially the millennial generation, are taking advantage of a low interest rate and bringing down their payments. And you've heard me say it as well. And to Lane's point, when I bought my, Philip and I bought our first condo back in 1980, our interest rate was 16 and percent. That condo cost $100,000. Our mortgage now is over five times that. And our payment is less than what that was at that point in time. So again, a parallel story to what Lane has. And uh, that's backed up by an, a, a survey or a study the uh, National Association of Realtors has done saying housing affordability now is better than any time in the last 40 years. So we like seeing that. And we also know, again, I want to reiterate to Lane's point, even if inventory doubles, we're still in what's called a neutral market. It will not flip to be a buyer's market anytime soon. So the sellers are in good shape right now. They're looking good moving forward. We're still thinking there's going to be an increase in inventory, which will be good to keep the market healthy. But all signs are in point, again, pointing to no slump in the housing market or prices. Yeah. And let's talk about that slight increase in inventory here a little bit, because historically cool. in November, nationally, at least, we see about a 9% decrease uh, in sales overall, just in a normal November. But what happens during a presidential election year in November, that nine, close to 10% increases to 15%. We might not feel the effects of it as much here in Southern California, because we don't have a seasonality uh, effect as it, to where in a harsh winter, we don't have to shovel our driveways to show homes, we're able to show homes year round. So these are national numbers. So what tends to happen is yes, you do see a little bit of a slowdown in November, and then a little bit more of a slowdown during a presidential election year. So we are like currently in November during a presidential election year. So you might see a little bit of an increase in a slowdown. However, all of those sales that you know might have been halted during November are deferred to the following spring. And studies have shown that that following spring after a presidential election year, no matter who is, is holding office, actually is the best year for real estate in that four year cycle. And then uh, in recapping with number one, demand being strong among millennials, uh, number two, mortgage rates being historically low. Let's jump into number three, shall we? Yeah. 